What's up everyone? In this video, I wanted to help give you some ideas of how you can troubleshoot a failed video export or render, whatever you want to call it, from Adobe Premiere to Adobe Media Encoder 2020. I've been using Premiere 2020 for most of this year and Lately, I've been getting a lot of failed exports and I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe these files are 4K. Maybe it's because my media is on different drives. I don't know, but so some ideas that you can try that have worked for me in the past is the first thing is to do a reset. So what you can do is look at the failed export and definitely take a look at the message there. Now, if you look at the error message and it tells you that it failed at around 16 seconds in the time code or 16th of a second, then you can focus in on that part of the video, the very first part of the video. Maybe it's a transition, maybe it's a title, maybe it's the video clip. You can delete that Duplicate your sequence first and delete that out of the video and then try export it again. You can also try straight from the encoder. You can reset it, reset the status, and just try again. If that doesn't work, you can try put the output file in a different path by clicking here and just save, save it on a different area. So I like to save to my external hard drive, but that's slower than saving direct to a hard drive, especially if you have SSD. So sometimes I'll just, in this case, I'll just save directly to my internal hard drive, which can fill up quickly. Another thing you can try is you can click on the, the preset and, um, okay, let me just cancel that here. You can actually click on the the preset and just change the codec that it was saved in. Maybe you want to try high quality 4K instead of the YouTube 4K. Uh, you can change the preset over here. So that's really nice to be able to change that. And another thing you can try that's worked is actually just close down the Adobe Media Encoder and just reopen it. For the most part, it'll remember any projects that you've exported out to the encoder unless you've deleted it and try again. So this is one I just exported, it failed before. And what I did is I closed Adobe Media Encoder, open it again, I reset it and I just ran the export again with the same settings and it works. So it said completed with some warnings. You can look at the warnings if you want. These are not fun to look at. But yeah, I'm just looking at it near the bottom. Okay, let's just see. Okay, the warning is there's a missing font, all right? So not a deal breaker there. Best thing you can do is just to play back the file before you upload it and make sure everything's okay. Especially pay attention to the fonts. The worst thing that can happen is you get, you know, some weird thing happen because it's what has a missing font. So Give it a quick scrub through. Yeah, something like this. And just make sure everything looks all right. Okay, so hope that video helps you out. If you're having trouble with the exporting from Premiere to Encoder. I use Encoder because I like, to, sometimes I like to batch export and I can queue up all the files I want to render and uh, go back to Premiere, just freeze it up. And last thing you can try is you can actually just go back to the same project 
You can even just try export it again from the sequence. You can duplicate the sequence. I even had one project that was so stubborn. I just took a... Because Adobe Premiere crashes so much, I'll export uh, like a first pass if I've trimmed everything and I haven't added any B-roll. So I'll just export that just in case anything happens. And one time what I did is I actually drag the finished file and because I hadn't added B-roll yet, you know, I didn't need to start from that original sequence. I just created a brand new project with that exported base file and then added the, um, the B-roll after. So you can be creative with that. And my recommendations are save often, export a base file often, and you can try these different things to uh, try to get your export to work. Um, I have to say Final Cut Pro X on a Mac is a lot more reliable. But um, yeah, for now I'm using Adobe Premiere. It's doing the job. And I uh, hope you found this helpful. Please like, subscribe if you did. And we'll see you later. Bye.